Stage 8 will take the riders from the town of Fidjiak to the southern city of Toulouse, all up around 172 kilometres. But compared to the last two days of racing, the category climbs are much gentle before the downhill run into Toulouse. The peloton has been reduced to 176 and not the smoothest of rollouts for these riders who were engaged in a minor bingle. As has been the case for many stages this year, an attack was launched from the go yet again. Three riders made a bold escape. Ahmed Chiruka of the Uscatel team was joined by French pair Christophe Riblon of AG2R and Jerome Pinot of Boish Telecom, who was later accompanied by teammate Laurent Lefebvre. Kim Kirken was working hard in the yellow jersey, but would he want to keep the top prize on the eve of the Tour Sojourn into the Pyrenees? Driving the peloton for Team Columbia was Kirken's crocodile man, Adam Hansen. With the rain falling, the dangerous roads brought a temporary halt to the chasers, allowing the leading trio to maintain a maximum advantage of some five minutes. It was up to the sprinters' teams to ensure their respective fast men would have another crack of taking stage honours. Looking for the good lead out from his man. There you can see Cavendish just popping out on his wheel is Kerit Stegemans. The sprinters are all queuing up now behind Team Columbia. Uh, the face of George Hincap is just peeping into our picture here, but it's the rider just behind and not far away from Robbie Hunter of South Africa. Mark Cavendish is there. There's a push on the outside, though. All of the sprinters, for the first time, I think, really fancy their chances today as they race into Toulouse. Look how they're fanning now as they all try to find their own way at two kilometres off the front, and Team Columbia now are having to shed some men. Well, Robbie McEwen zigzagging in the middle, waiting to see which side the door is going to open. There's a line of white-clad riders over over on the right hand side there those were the guys from quick step they'll be looking after their man head stegemans i haven't seen anything of tor hushoff for the moment i'm sure he's absolutely there it's in fact quick step now i've taken up the pace making on the front third in the line there is big head stegemans normally known as a lead out man for tom bonham but he knows how to win stages of the tour de france himself high road now phil have lost a little bit of control at the front end of the main field and that makes it precarious well that means now that mark cavendish may have to switch teams here and start following the riders from belgium in the quick step colours of white and blue Robert Foster is forced into the way too with team Gerald Steiner they are the lighter blue colours it may be all going a little bit per shape for Cavendish at this moment he's gonna have... now watch this bend this is the one where it could all go wrong as they gently make the corner the middle of the bunch has had to slow right down here now which means it's only the riders in the first 30 now who have any hope at all it's a long way to go because there is the red kite 1000 meters to go and there was everybody got around there nice and safely still team quick step pretty much in control up into fourth position there is oscar Freire, and most of the sprinters got around nice and safely we had to get out of the uh, ro the road at this point because we need to make sure that this race is nice and safe for the sprinters still in control quick step not too far away peeking round every now and again is mark cavendish oscar Freire, eric zabel they're all there robbie hunter in the red as well well, Cav there's Cavendish in the light blue. He's a little bit far back, but he does have a terrific finish if he gets a good view of that finish. And as they try to lead Stegmans to the line here, now Freire is third wheel. Cavendish is sixth place at the moment, but this man does pack an incredible finish. Cavendish needs to break now as Stegmans gets the perfect lead out. Freire is looking hot. Robbie Hunter coming in the red. Stegmans goes. Now here comes Mark Cavendish. He swings to the left. He kicks. Mark Cavendish so quick over this last distance. As as Cavendish races towards the line, he gets it. That is unbelievable. He has got his second win of the Tour de France to equal the two he got in the Giro d'Italia. Well, Mark Cavendish is proving uh, unbeatable at the moment in the results at the end of the sprint. He has got such an incredible turn of speed. His team had complete control until around about two kilometers to go, and then they lost control, but he was still feel able to do it himself. That was brilliant, you know, once again, you got to see how well my team worked, you know, they controlled the race all day, there was a breakaway, and then, yeah, we got help from the other sprint teams this time at the finish, and it came down perfect time to catch the break, and uh, we caught them and <laughs> finished off with a 1-2, so we can't get any better than that. Yeah, um, hard work's paid off, I guess. <laughs> it's a hard day, um, we spent the whole day in front, covering everything at the start, break went, then we had to um, control it, and then um, set them up in the final.